syllabus which comes towards the end, but we in the industry feel the JTAG to be taught up front because the first thing as a user, we start using the chip using JTAG, right? So we have to learn everything top down. That's what we learned as a kid. Right? So when we are in a school, school, elementary school, what happens? We look at Apple and decide is Apple. After that, only learn is the spelling for that, right? Then we learn to write it. Everything happens top down. But in academics, everything is bottom up. You learn what is the trans, you know what is the semiconductor, you learn what is the transistor, you learn what is the amplifier, you learn what is the gate, you learn what is the flip flop, you learn what is the, everything is going bottom up to the system. And they don't teach what is system in the academics because nobody knows what is the system, right? But we people in the industry, we understand what is the system, right? So we have to look at everything top down. That's why we used to learn from when you're a kid, right? You, you tell your uh, uh, mom or dad in your little language, orally first, then you repeat the words what your parents tell you, right? That's how you learn the language, right? But you learn semantics, syntax, you learn very log or system very log. That's not the approach. You have to do everything top down, so please unlearn, unlearn, okay? So let's start. What is the JTAG? Why it is needed, right? What is the motivation? So you buy chips. We saw what is the PCB, the previous chapter in the First monitoring module, making of SOC, right? We buy chips and assemble them on a board. Now we have to test the board and the chips. How do we test it? This is the board, what we have, the other box, and we have six chips connected, there are six chips connected there. One, two, three, four, five, six chips. Note there are four pins. We'll be talking that throughout this chapter for the next three hours. I hope you complete it in three hours or less than that. There are some self-learning topics will be there. I'll assign as we move forward. TDI, TMS, TCK, TDO. Don't worry about them. We are doing top down. There is a board. There are six chips. They are connected in some fashion. We have to test it. How we are going to test it? That's the objective of this particular chapter. Okay. So this is the uh, agenda of this particular chapter. We have to understand this particular standard. How do we test the board? This standard uh, you have to learn on your own. We will teach some basics. I will teach. I will upload the standard in the classroom. You have to learn on your own, self-learning. Okay? And I'll teach you a high-level architecture I'll teach you. And it's pretty much a self-learning. What is JTAG mean? Okay. Joint Test Action Group. So it's called IEEE 1149.1, .1, the year 1990. Okay. There are a lot of revisions to the standard. Yeah, but if you I'll, if you are interested, you have to tell me, you know, I'll give you the what are the various standards, what are the difference. We can do that if you're interested. Otherwise, we we'll just go through basic standard, right? The time is of essence. But I expect you to do it practically whatever you learn. That's more important than learning more. Practice is what industry needs, solving problems, right? So we'll plan hackathons if there is interest. I plan to do a hackathon for this particular chapter if you're interested, okay? Why use the boundary scan? You have to test the board level test. You have to test the board interconnect. So it tells us some logic, right? There are three agenda. Very important question. Take notes. What is the boundary scan? Why use the boundary scan? You have to test the board level test and diagnosis. What is diagnosis? This is on the chapter one. You have to test the interconnect between the chip. Chip, chip to chip, there are connections. So you can JTAG can test that. Note all the red level, red keywords are extremely important. So test the on chip system logic. We are going to test it. How do we test it? We'll see. Right, so board level, there are three things we discussed. First is board level test and diagnosis. So how do we do that? See here, this is a board connect, the chip connectivity. Right, the chip 4, chip 5, chip 6 input. And they're all connected. What is this called? It's called daisy chain. Go back to your microprocessor or microcontroller chapter, what you have studied. If you're not studied, go back and study again. Right, it's connected in a daisy chain format. Right, it's called daisy chaining. Got DMA or interrupts, right? Nested interrupts, you know what is a daisy chain, right? So you can do offline testing, online testing. What is offline? What is online? Please pause the video for a minute. Okay, hope you understand what is offline and online. Onboard wires among chips. How do you test the second chip? Objective is test the onboard wires on the chip. So, this is a wire, right? 
So on board wire, these are the wires it connected. This is connected between chip to chip. And you are sending a pattern from chip one to chip two, right? You are sending us, uh, and there are some bugs here. This particular wire is shorted to ground, and there is a solder. You know what is the solder I on this board, right? I I would suggest you buy a board and learn to solder. Strongly recommended, right? Or you take it away as a hobby. So playing a game, PUBG or some games. But you spend half an hour a month or half an hour a week, understand how to solder a chip on the board. Go to the lab, and if you don't have a lab, set up in your hostel. If you're really interested, you should do that. If you want to pursue a career in electronics, you must do. You should know how to solder a board and a chip. Please do that. I would highly recommend it. It's not very expensive. Right. So there's a solder bridge. There's a solder. There's a short between these two lines, and this is the line is grounded. So we are sending a pattern in the input x x x x. 101 xx xs and 4xs right and so this this bit is scanned in first you are going to scan in from here so this x goes in first right you start shifting in from the what do you call this is left shift you shift from here and it goes like this when you shift what will happen shift it completely cut in completely what happens this first x you go here so 4x will come then 8x will come Four and eight x, right? And this x will ninth x will come here. Then one zero one pattern. Then after this four x, right? So you start shifting from here. This is the, the way you shift the bits, and you shift it like this, right? So you calculate it. You do manual calculation. Pause the video. Do the manual calculation. You will understand, right? So this is the pattern get shifted in. This is stuck at ground. So this we are not seeing this logic. So assume this. This is a fault. We, do, we, are, we don't know what is a fault. So we are making assumption. We are doing top down. So you assume apple is pronounced as a p p l e apple. You have to assume that. You assume you think that I know things better than you, but I say I don't know anything. But this is what my faculty have taught me. This is what industry has taught me. This is what my mentors industry have taught me. You assume this for now. Later on we go and validate in a couple of chapters from now. You assume. Forget this D. Right. This is one. This value has to be. This value is one, so this value is supposed to be one because this this net is gone gone that this is zero. This is actual value. It's supposed to be that this is a faulty value. Okay, that much more. One slash zero means one is actual value without a without a defect. Zero with the defect. Defect is grounded, so this defect. So this is like a more like an AND gate kind of thing, right? This is one zero. It's some some solder bridge. It's supposed to get a one. You know the fault. It is getting a zero there. Right? It's not an AND gate. So Fire and model, some some and model, right? Assume something. So suppose you get a one, but you are getting a zero in the defect condition. Don't worry about these things. Some model and model. We'll talk later. This is item number two. Let's see what is item number three. This is the on-chip system logic. Let's see inside your chip, your AND gate, and in all your inputs and outputs of the chip are connected to the JTAG format. Right? Your chip has been already assembled on the board. You cannot use the ATE. ATE is when your chip is unassembled, the package part or a wafer or a die. You can check in the ATE. That's what we learned in the chapter one. So here now the chip is already assembled on the board. You cannot put it back and put it on the ATE, right? So what do you do? So you can still send some patterns and observe the outputs, right? So what do you do? You send the inputs. Scan this bit first. This goes in first. X X X X. Goes like this. Zero one 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 comes, and assume this AND gate. You get a one one. So finally, you have zero one one. Sorry, x one one x x x x x. That's what you have. X x x x x one one x. That's what finally you have. When you shift it, scan it. This is which is scanned in first. But when you shift out, this is what you are going to get. X x x x x x one x will get it, right? Because this AND gate here. One and one is one. Scan out. You get a one here in the output, right? So similarly, you try for other patterns. You get the output. You can pause the video. You can try. So a quiz. So what the following is not true about boundary scan? So you will have to understand what is it. What is can you read yourself? Answer yourself. I'll not show the answer. So find out what is the answer. Pause the video. And set for yourself.
Okay, I skipped the answer. Just for a reason. Okay. So what is a tap? Test access port. You have to ask WH questions, right? So ask yourself. Tap is test access port. There are four pins mandatory. TDI. The fourth slide I showed you. It's called test data input, test data output. I pause it. You read on your own. So there are three inputs, one output, right? T is TRC reset pin. It's active low. It is optional pin. This four are mandatory pin for the JTAG or a tap for text. Tap controller. JTAG controller is also called tap controller. You can see a tap controller. And there will be the internals of the JTAG. What is inside this? We'll see that in detail. Okay, so this is state machine. We all know what is a state machine. This is your homework. You're going to understand what you can pause the video, you can understand how this logic works yourself. I'm not going to teach this. This is a self-learning assignment. Okay. If you have any doubts, you have to ask me. So what does the tap controller do? It controls a JTAG operation. There are 16 states in machine. There are eight instruction states and eight data. This is a data state and this is instruction state. You know what is instruction, what is the data? Based on microprocessor knowledge, or microcomputer knowledge, what a microcontroller knowledge, right? 16 state, TCK is a clock, TMS is an input, right? How to reset a JTAG? Is that a series of ones? It'll get reset. You have to analyze it yourself. Or you put a TR, if you have a TRST pin, make it zero, it will reset. Right? That's it. This logic reset. So, JTAG registers. So, there is something called data register and instruction register. Obviously, you know, based on microprocessor, you know what is a data register, instruction register. And two types of data registers are there bypass register, what is called bypass scan registers. We'll see that what is that later on. Don't worry about it. But understand the classification. There are two types of major registers. Data registers, instruction registers. In the data registers, there are two classifications: bypass registers, boundary scan registers. Right? There are these three are mandatory registers, and these registers share the same TDI and TDO. You can see the architecture diagram. There are some these are boundary scan registers. There are instruction register, data registers. This is called bypass and boundary scan. This boundary, this boundary scan register, this bypass register. You can have optional registers. TDI, the TDI and TDO are shared. Let me do one more slide. So, what is the bypass register? It's going to bypass. What is the bypass? Is a bypass surgery or transplant or any uh, any disease of the heart? We call something called bypass thing, right? Surgery. What do they do? Please pause and think. What is a bypass? Bypass filter. Think on your own. Right? Visualize it. So, it provides a shortcut between TDI and TDO. There's one flip flop. To ship the data to TDI to TDO. That is the bypass. So the bypass register can that's a flip flop. You can bypass that, you can directly go to the output, right? To ship the data from TDI to TDO. Okay, so bypass register is a single bit shortcut throughout the chip. When you put the chip in bypass mode, it shorts the number of chips. Typically it takes to, for, to scan through all these three chips, assuming there are eight pins per chip, we are assuming. So three <coughs> chips, so 24 pins. It takes 24 clocks to scan. But if you put this chip in bypass mode with the bypass register, it takes only one clock to bypass. Eight clocks for this, eight clocks for this. Total 17 clocks. Calculate the, how much sustain is reduced. So n number of chips, the n number of m number of IOs. You calculate how much reduction you are going to get. So bypass register saves the test time. Come back or correlate with chapter one what we read. What is the boundary scan register? BSR forms a boundary scan register. There's something called boundary scan select input, input boundary scan cell, output boundary scan cell. What is the purpose? They control the system we open, observe the system we open. Go back to chapter one. We discussed controllability and observability. There's a key thing throughout the course, we are going to keep talking about that. So the BSR allows you to control the IOs and observe the IOs. How does it do? We shall see the subsequent class. I shall pause the video now. We'll do that later. Right? We'll stop with this particular slide. We'll continue the next class. Thank you.